Moving aside of our regular schedule, I want to start a new series here on YouTube because I found that there is a lack of this type of content. There is a lot of uh, content when it comes to penetration testing and cybersecurity when it comes to the practical stuff, but a lot of it is from a CTF-ish perspective. And what I want to do in this new series is to actually go into and approach real-world penetration testing and approach it from a methodical perspective and what i'm actually going to do is that i'm going to look over the owasp application security verification standard and right now i'm here on my tablet so i'm going over the owasp application security verification standard which is sort of like in the ballpark of 71 pages and this is a really concise way of getting yourself I, I see it as a checklist now there are a lot of checklists on the internet when it comes to penetration testing but there isn't too much content when it comes to how to do it there is a lot of content that's very specific on penetration testing but not what to do step by step when you're actually in a penetration test and this ASVS this application security verification standard is the final version from October 2021. So what I'm going to do is dedicate each section of this um, verification standard. Like, for example, we're going to flash through the version 1, uh, the V1 uh, architecture design and thread modeling. We're going to flash through this because this is more like to be talked or to be discussed with the architects of the application, so, so to speak, with the, the designers, with coders, with the developers, uh, talking about how the application is built and talking about higher level perspective. And we're going to skip over this first section or maybe flesh through it and go into the very nitty gritty. And so we're going to dedicate enough time for authentication, session management, access controls, validation, sanitization, and encoding. And what I basically want to do is to provide a blueprint for the actual penetration tester for the cybersecurity professional and not for someone who's gonna or who wants to become a cybersecurity professional, but for someone who actually is a cybersecurity professional, because I realize that there isn't too much insight into this. And I keep repeating that. V7 error handling and logging, V8 data protection, and as I said, I'm going to provide my experience from my own penetration tests and maybe move or maybe learn some stuff myself along the lines. In another series or in other videos, I may also go through the OWASP VS, so VSTG, Web Security Testing Guide, which is another um, mammoth in of itself. VSTG is much more thorough when it comes to what to do when you're testing a web application. It's a testing guide. Now, in this case, this is only a very concise uh, methodology. It's a security verification standard, ASVS. All right, so that being said, let's actually jump into it and go through the V1 architecture design and threat modeling. So as we see October 3rd, that's when it was released just a couple of months ago. And if uh, alongside this series, there's going to be another version that's newer that's going to be out i'm actually going to go over and talk about that one now this is introductory stuff what's changed this uh, series is going to be actually really practical so i'm really practical in terms of the experience so i'm not in terms of my experience and in terms of uh, asvs and i'm not actually going to go a lot into discussing theories Using ASVS, so it has two main goals, to help organizations develop and maintain secure applications 
and to allow security service vendors, security tool vendors, and consumers to align their requirements. So if you're a penetration tester, and if someone asks you to do a penetration test on their application, you might want to be familiar or you might want to be aware of the three levels that ASVS is talking about. So they have level one, which is for low assurance level, and it's completely penetration testable. And you're going to see more about this when we, when we get into the nitty gritty in each section. ASVS level two is for applications that contain sensitive data, which require protection and is recommended level for the most apps. So when you're going to test, you want to be able uh, to assure that your penetration test covers at least the first so ASVS level one and ASVS level three. Now level two. Now when it comes to ASVS level three is for the most critical applications. Think think about banking applications. Think about medical applications or applications that require the high, highest level of trust. As we can see here, we have a nice diagram on what uh, each level security requirements contain level one applicability to all apps level three level one and level two to all apps level three to high assurance apps when it comes to applicability when it comes to building there is nothing in uh, level one while for level two and level three you get the security architecture and reviews now as you can see this is just for orientation purposes Level 1 is the only level that is completely penetration testable using humans. All others require access to documentation, source code, configuration, and the people involved in the development process. Which actually means that level 2 and level 3 requires you to look into the documentation, into the source code. If you're doing a black box testing, this might not be possible. Looking into the configuration and the people involved. So as I've talked about previously, V1 architecture is discussing with the people involved in the development process. However, if L1 allows black box, not, no documentation and no source testing to occur, it is not an effective assurance activity and should be actively discouraged, which is along the lines of what I said. Malicious attackers have a great deal of time. Most penetration tests are over within a couple of weeks. Not even like that. There are situations when someone asks you, so for a small application, they ask you to give a penetration test in maybe 20, 30 or 40 hours which is in the ballpark of even less than a week if you're working at that penetration test, for example, 10 hours a day. And I've been in that situation, that's why I'm saying it. Defenders need to build in security controls, protect and find, resolve all weaknesses and detect and respond to malicious actors in a reasonable time. So another thing that I want to point out is that you, an application or the developers of an application might be required for sanity purposes and for the security of the application should be required to conduct a penetration test every so frequently. Let's say every couple of weeks, every couple of months, depending on the way their application changes over time. And most applications change very frequently because when one of the frameworks that you're using becomes obsolete the next day or a new version appears the next day and in the change log it says that that framework suffered security issues you might be wanting to update that application or run tests security tests penetration tests more frequently all right so moving over this one of the best ways to use this application security verification standard is to use it as a blueprint, which is exactly what I've said. To create secure coding checklist specific to your application. So this is very applicable to penetration testers and cybersecurity professionals. All right, level one, level two, most applications, level three, highest, 
high value, high assurance, or high safety. All right, so flashing forward through this, I'm just going to say that we're going to skip through the V1 architecture design and threat modeling because um, it's very abstract and it doesn't necessarily have a high applicability when it comes to actively penetration testing something. So all too often security is seen as inflexible and demanding that developers fix code in a particular way when the developers may know a much better way to solve the problem. All right. In this chapter, the SVS covers off the primary aspects of any sound security architecture, availability, confidentiality, processing integrity, non-repudiation, repudiation, and privacy. So each of these security principles must be built in and be innate to all applications. So you have to keep that in mind. It is critical to shift left starting with developer enablement with secure coding checklists, mentoring and training, coding and testing, building, deployment, configuration and operations, and finishing with follow-up independent testing to assure that all of security controls are present and functional. It's really important. So this is what V1 talks about. As you can see, you have no check mark for L1 when it comes to secure software development lifecycle, because this, when it comes to L1 level of assurance, this is not covered. So that's why in most penetration tests, when you're talking about applications that go beyond the level of small, you'll be looking at L2 and L3. So L2 and L3, which have the check mark. And uh, verify the use of a secure software development cycle, life cycle that addresses security in all stages. So a penetration tester wouldn't be able to do this on themselves without talking with the right people, which is why I said we would not be focusing on this one. Most of the V1 is focused on the architecture. So in this case, authentication architecture, input and output architecture, cryptographic architecture. Let's see what one of this is all about. Verify that consumer of cryptographic services protect key materials and other secrets by using key vaults or API based alternatives. You cannot, in most circumstances, you cannot do that without talking to the developers in themselves. Verify that all keys and passwords are replaceable and part of a well-defined process to re-encrypt sensitive data. So key people will be able to explain to you as a penetration tester or as a cybersecurity officer whether or not this is actually happening, whether or not you're going to receive the check mark, yes or no. V17 error logging and auditing architecture, 18 privacy data protection architecture, communication architecture, malicious software architecture. And as you're going to see in this V1, they're talking about architecture for each of these topics. But as we go through, each of these are in themselves topics. So, for example, we can go back and see V2 authentication architecture, V12 authentication architecture, but V.2 is going to be authentication checklists. And we're going to go over through those authentication. All right. Proceeding further. Secure file upload architecture. I've seen a lot of issues when it comes to appropriately uploading files when it comes to penetration tests. And there are a lot of issues. Now, at, at the end of each uh, V verification is a list of references. And most of them circle back to OWASP. As you can see, OWASP 
thread modeling, cheat sheet, attack surface analysis, thread modeling, software assurance maturity, Microsoft software develop, secure development lifecycle and NIST standard. V2 authentication. This is what we're going to go into the next video. So authentication, as you can see, password security. Verify that the user set password are at least 12 characters in length after multiple spaces are combined. So we're going to get into the needy greedy of this in the next video. This first video was the was the introductory video. And we're going to move forward from V2 verification to authentication in the next video. So this is really, really exciting.